The book of Proverbs was written for practical application. Everyday wisdom for everyday problems. I love Proverbs, and I think it's one of the finest ways for parents to teach their children about life and about God. Wisdom is defined as living skillfully and effectively in a wicked world. And the book of Proverbs is given to parents especially to train up their children in the ways of the wise. Now, It's difficult, however, to use this book because while it's a collection of sayings, it is not organized topically. And so in order to help parents to use this book for parenting, I created a book called What Would Solomon Say? And this book is a tool for teaching children how to apply Proverbs to their lives and to the lives of others. So how did I do this? Well, the various problems young people face and the solutions to those problems are conveyed through letters to and from Solomon, the king who knew everything. I really pray that parents, counselors, and pastors will find this book to be a helpful means of communicating practical wisdom to young people without preaching to them. The book is arranged in the format of challenging letters from young people to Solomon that provoke lively conversations and lead to learning through discussion and Solomon's wise responses. So this is an interactive guide to Proverbs. Young people will learn to counsel themselves by discussing the application of Proverbs to the lives of others. Family interaction, as you know, is the preferred biblical method of learning. So let your children play the role of counselors by using this book. In that way, they might be able to apply the wisdom of God's word to their own lives. What would Solomon say can also be used as a training manual for youth counselors who need to make God's word their word to children. I pray that this little book would have a mighty impact on the lives of parents and children. As a father of three precious boys myself, I'm aware of how desperately I need wisdom every day. May God use this work to bless your family and all of your labors with his children. Now, here's a practical guide to using what would Solomon say. I call it the seven-step method. So, step one, let the children read the letter aloud. The fictional letter or the written to Solomon by some uh, teenager who was upset about some problem. Step two, ask them the discussion questions and let them respond freely. Step three, ask your children to explain the proverb that's listed in the next section, and if they can't decode the meaning, help them. Step four, tell your children, let's see what Solomon would say. And step five, either you or the child can read Solomon's response. Some responses are long and should be read and discussed in sections. Step six, turn to the Bible passages referred to in the reading or in the section just below that. And step seven, pick a proverb for memorization. So today's letter comes from a child who believes that his parents are old and old-fashioned. And during this series, I'm going to be reading you some excerpts from the book because I believe that if you get this book, it'll be a powerful way to interact with your children and to teach them what I call the Deuteronomy method as you go, as you walk by the way, and to have conversations with your children about the book of Proverbs. The wisdom of Proverbs is ancient, but relevant to today and every day. So here's a letter from a young uh, child, uh, and I'm going to read the letter, and then I'm going to read steps A and B and C to give you a sense of how you can use this. Dear Solomon, my parents are old and old-fashioned. They are always trying to give me advice based on their experience. I am so tired of hearing, when I was your age. I mean, that was like a hundred years ago. I don't think that they can tell me anything worth listening to, because they don't understand what young people go through these days. Yours truly, tired of the same old advice. Now, you might think that's a funny letter, but think about it. Our culture tells children that they are wiser than their parents. All the television shows, 
everything that they look at in the movies tells them that their parents are outdated, their parents are ancient, and their friends or their peers are more relative and more wise than their parents. Is it no wonder that with such cultural inundation that our children often seek out the advice and the modeling of their peers rather than their parents? And they're so concerned about what their peers think about them that they reject the advice of their parents. Well, this letter says it all, right? Yours truly tired of the same old advice. So after I've read this letter with my family, what I would do is, uh, section A says, do you think that a lot of kids feel this way? What would you say to a friend who felt this way? And now you're giving your children an opportunity to participate by asking them the simple question, do you think that a lot of kids feel this way? And then the next question is, in your own words, what do you think the following proverb means? And the proverbs for this section is, hear my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Let me read that again. Hear my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. So this proverb really summarizes what this letter, this section will be about and the advice that Solomon will give. And when you ask your children to decode the proverb, to discuss it, once again, you're interacting with them. Well, now, section C, here's what Solomon would say. And Solomon responds, as he always does, right from Scripture and with love, compassion, but with truth. So Solomon writes, Dear tired of the same old advice, let me remind you of what I said in the first part of Proverbs. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Proverbs 1, verse 8. If you think that your parents are outdated and ignorant, says Solomon, you are playing the fool because God has appointed and anointed your parents as your primary guide to wisdom. Your parents are the pastors and shepherds of your home. They are responsible to God for guiding you properly, and you are responsible to God for listening to them. Yes, their advice is old, but old advice is often the best advice. And listening to those older than you are can be a true sign of wisdom and humility. How I wish that Rehoboam, my son, had listened to my advisors. Instead, he surrounded himself with young men just like himself, proud and foolish young men, who gave him bad advice. My son, and I can't believe I'm saying this, actually began to boast about how much better and tougher he was going to be than his own father. Well, needless to say, the people rebelled, and Israel split into two nations as a result of the civil war that Rebbe, my pet name for Rehoboam, started. What a shame. If he had only listened to the older, wiser men, that would never have happened. I want you to remember... That wisdom can come from experience, and experience can come from age. Don't despise your parents. Their experience can save you a lot of heartache, because they have already done some of the dumb things that they are now warning you about. If someone tells you that fire is hot, you don't have to put your hand into it to know it's hot. Just listen to those who have already gone ahead of you. Finally, stop thinking like your friends and see your parents as the valuable, honored teachers that they truly are. Your friend, Solomon. Well, needless to say, beloved, that's a mouthful. And a parent can use this letter to help to instruct their children, to prevent the temptation to follow their peers, to go against this this, this cultural mandate that somehow parents are lost and kids know everything. I encourage you to take a letter like this, to use the book of Proverbs, and to interact with your children so that they get to learn the valuable lessons of Proverbs. And Proverbs is emphatic about parental power and advice. Proverbs gives parents the responsibility and the ability to teach their parents, but it tells children your responsibility is to listen to your parents. There is no, There are no bones about this in the book of Proverbs. Listen again, Proverbs 23, 22 from the New American Standard Bible. Listen to your father who begot you and do not despise your mother 
when she is old. Now just take a look at that for a second. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Now, it's interesting because the Solomon says, don't despise your mother when she is old, which means that the child has grown up. And whereas perhaps in their earlier days they listened to mom and dad, now they feel that because they're adults, they can simply dishonor their parents. Now, it is a fact that I don't think older children or adults should live in the home after they've reached a certain age because they need to have their independence. And it's very difficult for parents not to see children as if they were still growing up. I get that. Obviously, we live in a millennial age now where we have so many, uh, or the age of the millennial kids, rather, where we have so many kids who are young people who have graduated from college, are living at home, and it causes all kinds of problems. But one of the problems that should never confront a young person is this, despising your mother when she's old. And this is, this is something that's default in our culture. As our parents get older, children tend to disregard them, maybe be, even become contemptuous of their ways, knowing that they don't have to listen to them anymore. But Solomon warns, listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Beloved, the command to honor your father and your mother that your days may be long, is not just given to children. It is given to everyone. No matter how old you are, you should always honor your father and your mother. Again, the same chapter, Proverbs 23, this time verse 24. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who sires a wise son will be glad in him. I always tell kids, if you want to make your parents happy, please don't give them a Christmas card or a birthday card or a whatever. That, that's okay. But if you really want to make them happy, if you really want your father to rejoice, be righteous. Be a good son. Make them proud with your grades in school. Make them proud of how you're listening at home if you're in homeschool. It says, he who sires a wise son will be glad in him. I love the old English word sire, right? Bring forth into the world. will be glad in him. So if you really want to make your father happy, be wise. Let your dad stand back and say, oh my, look how wise my son is. Look how righteous my children are. Look how wonderful my daughter is. This is what brings joy to parents and not just fathers, but to mothers also. Again, Proverbs twenty three twenty five, Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her rejoice who gave birth to you. Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her rejoice who gave birth to you. Now, why would your mother rejoice? Well, the Bible says a wise son makes his father glad, and that goes along with, the, with a mother. Parents rejoice when their children are righteous and when they're wise. They can't be made fools of. And they recognize they've done their job as parents. The reason they rejoice is because they know that if the fruit of their parental labors is a wise and righteous child, they've done their job well. And yes, they can boast. Not before others, but before God and say, God, with all of your power and wisdom, we've raised righteous and wise children. So if you want your parents to be happy, be good. If you want your parents to be happy, be wise. This is the greatest gift that children can give to their parents. The gift of righteousness and the gift of wise actions. Well, this is what the Bible teaches. God teaches that no matter how old you are or how young you are, it is the duty of every child to be obedient to their parents. The culture will tell us that that's negotiable, that's based on circumstance, but the book of Proverbs and the word of God are unyielding on this point. Paul the Apostle will say later on, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. The only duty of children is to love God with all their heart, soul, and mind, and to honor their parents. Praise God.